Hello and welcome to the Case IH Axle Flow 250 Series Combine Operation Guide. In this video, we shall be looking along the right hand side of the combine, its features, access, and maintenance. The guards have high speed transport locks. These need to be released and stored in the unlocked position. Open both guards. The front guard latch needs to be released with a pin or small rod. This has a secondary safety latch, which can then be released. Gas struts hold the guard open. To open the rear guard, pull on the release lever, open the guard until the locking loop drops into the slot. Let us look at the drive lines on the right hand side of the combine. Remove the tri sweep returns guard to see the belt drives. It is worth explaining that the central intermediate shaft or low speed chopper shaft continues its drive through to the right hand side of the combine. It has two grease points requiring grease every 100 hours. The first belt closest to the combine frame drives the clean grain system including the elevator and bubble up auger gearboxes. This is realised by the belt driving an idler pulley which in turn drives via a radial pin slip clutch the chain drive to the elevator. On the outer side of the elevator a chain drives the bubble up gearboxes. At the bottom of the elevator the idle sprocket drives the clean grain lower cross auger. The belt and first chain have spring length indicator plates on the tension arms. The outer chain tension is such that the long chain span needs an approximate 7mm sag on it. The tension of the grain elevator paddle chain is correct when it is just possible to move the links laterally across the lower sprocket by hand. Adjustment is achieved by tightening or loosening the tension rod accordingly. The belt and chain tensions need to be checked every 50 hours. There is also a 300 hour grease point on the radial pin slip clutch. Please note that excepting the elevator and feeder, all chains should be lubricated at the end of each working day. The chain will be warm and the oil will penetrate the links to provide excellent protection and lubrication. The next drive belt is to the vacuum pump. This pump is drawing dirt and dust off the radiator outer screen. The sweeper arm constantly rotating over the surface of the radiator dust screen being driven via a belt by a small hydraulic motor. Both belt tensions need to be checked every 50 hours. On the end of the intermediate shaft and through an audible slip clutch, a pulley drives the tri-sweep return system via a special double-headed drive belt. The tri-sweep system threshes grain from any ears caught by the cleaning shoe return system using the hit and counter hit threshing method. The ears are hit at the bottom, counter hit in the middle and counter hit again before being thrown back into the cleaning shoe fully threshed. Again, the belt tension needs checking every 50 hours. This is very important as the drive from this belt continues via the return's lower cross auger shaft to drive the cleaning shaker shoe on the left hand side. Apart from cleaning the return's volume light sensor located at the bottom of the housing, the tri-sweep system requires no other maintenance. Both the clean grain and return's lower cross auger covers can be removed for cleaning between crops or if there is dirt built up. The cleaning fan is driven independently via a short belt by a hydraulic motor. The fan speed is controlled by the hydraulic oil flow. The belt has a spring length indicator on the tension arm which needs to be checked every 50 hours. On the inside of the clean grain elevator is the location of the moisture sensor housing including the hopper and evacuation auger. On combines with harvest command this is also the location of the grain quality camera. Crop dribbles into the hopper and when it is full, a moisture reading and if fitted, a picture is taken. Once done, 
the auger automatically starts up and empties the hopper back into the elevator and the process begins again. These items need periodic cleaning, especially after harvesting oilseed rape, corn and other oily or waxy type crops. Unscrew the two wing nuts and remove the moisture sensor. Remove dirt buildup using a soft, damp cloth and replace. The same applies to the camera. Open the door and clean the lens using a soft, damp cloth. Occasionally, a dirty camera lens warning alarm will appear on the Pro 700 screen when the camera cleaning is definitely required. At a similar time, or between crop types, remove the two holding pins of the evacuation auger and remove. Clean the auger and housing using a suitable bristle brush and replace. If the auger becomes blocked, the fuse will blow. In the case of standard machines, this fuse is located by the motor itself. On Harvest Command machines, the fuse is located on the main fuse board in the cab. Opposite this housing on the combine frame is the residue deflector. This is fitted to help centralise the residue exiting the threshing rotor. Depending upon the specification, the deflector is adjustable by means of a manually positioned rod or an electric motor switched from within the cab and seen on a pop-up window on the Pro 700 screen. Depending upon the weight and moisture of the residue, the deflector will occasionally need adjustment. Otherwise, residue will be spread unevenly across the field or the swath will be uneven, making for difficult baling conditions. A visual inspection behind the combine of the lay of the residue will be necessary to ensure correct adjustment. The grain tank cross augers have small half moon clean out panels easily accessible from the outside of the tank. Loosen the nuts and open the panels for cleaning and washout. The main fuel tank sits on this side of the combine. At the bottom of the tank is the shut off tap, primary filter, and water drain. Drain any accumulated water from this trap if the combine has been stood for any length of time or if the water in fuel alarm is seen. Please contact your fuel supplier for fuel shelf life and for their recommendations for fuel being kept in the tank typically for nine months of storage when the combine is not working. Remove the white cover panels to gain access to the rotor and cage. From here, you can change the right hand modules as required. You can also clean the returns forward throwing chute with a suitable bristle brush and if required, clean the grain pan. The concave support brackets are also visible. Every winter, the concave needs to be squared or zeroed to the rotor. This is achieved by using this bracketry. More detailed information and the zeroing adjustment procedure will be found in the operator's manual. Always remember that more comprehensive information can be found in the operator's manual, but should be read prior to harvest operations, maintenance and repairs. Thank you for watching and have a great season. <music>